Hi, I'm Pam with PJ's Glass Creations, and I would love to have you join me as part of my four-part garden series where we will learn how to make fused glass hyacinth, daisy, poppy, and hibiscus flowers. In my final part of the series, you'll also learn how to put them together as garden stakes or how to make this stunning floral plaque. Please join me. Today we are going to learn how to make the hyacinth flower. It's a small flower that I've used to incorporate into a larger piece. I will be doing other tutorials about the other flowers as well. But today, we'll just be focusing on the hyacinth. First thing I'm going to do is cut some strips. I am using Bullseye 118 Periwinkle Blue. You can use whatever color you want. I've seen pink hyacinths. I've seen, I think I've seen white hyacinths. Um, you also don't have to use Bullseye Glass if you're a System 93 or sorry, System 96 person, you can uh, use different glass as well. I'm going to start by cutting strips that are three quarters of an inch wide. You do not have to use a cutting system like I am. This is my well-loved ancient Morton system. I know there's a newer one out there, or you can just freehand your strips as well. But I'm going to cut several strips that are three quarters of an inch wide. I'm gonna get that on three quarters. And I'll start with that for now. And I'm going to start, or I uh, cut the whole segment off is all of my parts that has the strips and then I'm going to also make some cuts that are one inch wide this is kind of the speed method rather than doing each strip separately So I know you probably can't see this on the camera, but I have score marks three quarters of an inch this way and one inch this way. So now I'm going to break my strips using my running pliers. My line here needs to line up going the same direction as my line here. Squeeze. And hopefully I get a good break. Now just to show you, so you can see better where the lines are, let me get this out of the way. I'm going to use the Sharpie to show you where my lines are. You will not need to do this because you will be able to see your lines, hopefully. That one's kind of hard to see. Now, I'm going to be making cuts diagonally from corner to corner on each of these rectangles. So again, you don't need to draw them. I just did that so you can see on the camera. And I'm going to cut corner to corner. Don't worry about being too precise because this is nature and you want it to look organic. So on this strip, I'm going to break each rectangle off using my running pliers. Now 
and then I'm going to break on my diagonal cuts so that I get triangles. And these triangles are what uh, they're going to make the petals of the hyacinth. I'm going to do the same with my other strips here, and I will join you again when they are done. All of my pieces are cut for hyacinth petals right now. The next step is to fuse them. I'm going to put them all on this tray. You don't have to have them on a tray. You can do this directly on the kiln shelf. Um, I choose to use a paper underneath. I have papyrus paper. You can use thin fire paper, but this will keep it from picking up kiln wash. I have found that if I'm using opaque glass and I put it directly on the kiln shelf when making nuggets or petals for the hyacinths, uh, they tend to pick up the kiln wash and it sticks on there and you have to scrub to get it off. I guess it really wouldn't matter too much on these pieces because it'll be on the back side anyway, but uh, it's up to you. But I really do choose to put some paper underneath them. And I'm going to arrange these so that they are close, but not touching. We don't want them melting together. You don't need much space between them because these are only three millimeters thick and glass, when it melts, likes to be six millimeters thick. So these are going to shrink up and make kind of a rounded triangle shape, which is exactly what we're going for for our hyacinth flowers. So we'll quickly get these on here. We'll put them in the kiln and then we will be ready for our stem and to assemble our flowers. Like I said, they're really pretty easy flowers to make and the color, this is like one of my favorite colors, makes a beautiful hyacinth. And if you notice, some of my pieces are not quite the right shape. Some of them broke a little off, like this one here. Doesn't have a tip on it. Doesn't matter. Some are bigger, some are smaller. It doesn't matter. This is nature. And nature is not perfect. It makes it look a little bit better, I think, if they're not exactly perfect. So. We will make sure these are not touching by the time they get to the kiln, and I will be back in just a minute with our fully fused petals for the hyacinth. My petals have now come out of the kiln, and today we're going to build our hyacinth flower. It'll look something like this. And the first thing we need to do is cut a curvy stem that is about five or six inches long. I have two different go-to colors when I'm doing stems and leaves. This here is an avocado green. It's a bullseye 222 opaque glass. My other go-to is a bullseye olive green. It's a 212. And there's a little bit of difference. The Avocado green is a little bit more yellow, a little bit darker, richer tone. That's the one we'll be using today. Either one would be fine though, or you might have a different color that you prefer. So I have my piece of glass here, and I need to cut a stem that's about five inches long. So I'm going to start in one corner, 
and cut a triangular piece that gets smaller as I go. So this will be my stem. And this one measures about five inches. And we're going to build directly on either papyrus paper or thin fire paper because I am going to glue this to the paper as I go along. So the first thing I'm going to do to make it just a little easier on myself is to glue the stem down. It just takes a drop, it's super glue. Um, I am using super glue, Gorilla Super Glue. If you choose to use super glue, do not use gel super glue. Make sure that it's just the regular stuff they've always had. Uh, you can also use like a Elmer's school glue. Uh, with that, use it sparingly. If you get puddles of glue, sometimes it makes black marks on your glass when it comes out. Um, but just because I want this to go quickly today, I'm going to use the super glue. And you can see that I glued it to my paper. And that's because as I'm doing this, I don't want things to move around. So I'm going to put pieces on either side of the stem for my first row. And actually I'm gonna start with a little piece on the top too. And you can see that I'm gluing this to the paper as I go. And I'm choosing some of my bigger pieces for the first layer. And I'm going to use my, my uh, smaller pieces for the second layer. That looks pretty good there. And we'll start our second layer. Sorry, our second side. And if they don't stick, I can always go back later and add more glue. aren't staying very well so I'm just adding a tiny bit of glue to help them stay put and that's it for our first layer the second layer is going to go on top of the first layer but it's going to also cover part of the stem so I'm going to start up at the top again And I'll glue each piece as I go, just so it stays put. These things are rounded. They don't like to stay put very well. And I'm also covering up the gaps between the petals on the first layer. So we're not seeing daylight through our flowers. So there's one side. Now we'll do the other side. Kind of thinking I need a little one up here. Like this is a little one. That's better. I think we need that last one I put on the first layer. And then the last thing we're going to do, actually let me, let me make sure that these uh, are staying put. The last thing we're going to do is put a few smaller pieces right on the top. And this serves two purposes. It adds some more dimension, but it also hides where my petals all come together.
and there we have our hyacinth. I'm going to build a few others. I'll put them in the kiln at a tack fuse. And when they come out of the kiln, we'll talk about what's next. My hyacinth has been tack fused and it is out of the kiln. This particular one I have made into a garden stick so that I can put it in my flower pots that have died from the 115 degree temperatures out here in the desert. You can also make it into a plaque and I will have tutorials on both of these things later. And in the meantime, if you like what you saw, please like and share with your friends and also please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also visit me at pjsglasscreations.etsy.com. I'll see you for the next tutorial soon. Bye.